Well, I can't believe it, y'all, but we made it through our first season in Turkey. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, one and all, to episode number 25 of Bottom to the Top. How you doing? I'm Mr. Cellophane. We have made it to the final two matches of our first season in the Sport Toto Super League. And if you've been watching the series, you know that our life in Turkey has not been all wine and roses. But we have a chance, depending on how we come out against Trabzonspor and Bajak Shahir, we could finish the season as high as 7th place or as low as 13th. But either way, we are guaranteed to stay up. The relegation spots have already been decided as Hatay Spore, Konya Spore, and Pendik Spore are all out of the league for next year. So we have ensured ourselves safety for this year. We are a mid-table team. How much of a mid-table team will we be a top half team? That is to be decided today. We have had our usual up and down since the last episode where you saw us draw against Hatay Spore and win 2-1 against Alanya Spore. We followed that up after a little friendly to fill in the extra week in between matches with a 2-0 loss to Galatasaray, uh, a game we were not actually expecting to win, to be perfectly fair. We bounced back, though, with a 2-1 victory over Bodrum FK. Then we won a friendly. We followed that with another 1-0 win in the league, this time on the road at Fateh Karagumruk. Behind that, Adana Demishpor, they did beat us by a score of 2-0 at home. But again, we rebounded with a 2-0 victory against Rizespor on the road. And that is where we end up now. We've got Trabzonspor currently sitting in second place. Don't necessarily expect a victory there. But Jacques Shahir in sixth. So two very tough matches to finish the season. Hopefully we get some help with the teams around us and we can maintain at least our 10th place position but if we do win both we stand a chance of advancing all the way up in the seventh place let's see how it goes our recent run of games after the last episode has not been without its challenges mainly in the injury department we have seen long-term injuries suffered by dre siddiqui suleiman gunyesh arda atakan Eridem coming back off of an injury. Chan Koshkin with an injury before. So we have had to press guys in the service. Oh, and Ali Demerel out for three months. So we have had to press a lot of guys into service. So there will be a couple of changes, mostly on the bench, but some on the pitch as well. Nicholas is going to be in goal. It's going to be a back three of Damjoni. Ugrish Khan, who is just coming back from an injury himself, and Omer Yu. Furlong and Vink will be our wing backs. Toprak is going to be making his debut. He's a U19 player who has had a lot of success. Two goals, nine assists at the younger level. So uh, Toprak Uzun is going to be playing in place of Dres Sadiki. Uh, he's going to be paired with, in the midfield, Lamin Diak. It's going to be Yusuf and Diaz back in the attacking midfield with Mustafa Demirsi, a 17-year-old, coming in at striker to score the goals for us. And one of the obvious reasons I'm not upset that we have to make changes is because we are actually going to have to make some changes. We know guys like uh, Ben Wanis are not going to be around. Demerel actually wants to move to a bigger club, so he's been a little unhappy as of late. There's nothing really we can do. We tried to offer him more money. We had to come to an agreement on a price. Uh, so hopefully if we get 2.5, Seven, two point eight million, I think, uh, is what we decided on for him. He will be moving on as well. Plus, we've got Mamadou Fall, who will obviously not be coming back as he's set to turn thirty-five next year. We might have to look to make improvements in the goalkeeper realm. So, and and also we 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 are, we're going to need to bolster our ranks of Turkish first team players because we have run into an issue too many times where we have been unable to make changes because we have already maxed out the number of foreigners we can have on the pitch at any one given time Diaz throwing it in the middle he's going to find Mustafa and Mustafa is going to knock that 
little bit too hard, leaned back a little bit. I thought he might be able to score on the sitter, put us up 1-0, but unfortunately that was not meant to be as we tick over towards the first 15 minutes. A shot on goal apiece. Best opportunity of the game, though, did come for Kasim Pasha. Umit Gunis is going to send one in easily on Nicholas. Nicholas has been solid, and, and I know I use this phrase a lot, solid, yet unspectacular for us as Mustafa gets another opportunity, moving it forward into the box, one-on-one, -on -one, into the middle. Yusuf, his shot is going to be muted, sent away, but Toprak is going to regain control, moving it toward the left-hand side, carrying it forward. Malesh with a slide tackle is going to knock that out of play. It will be a Kasim Pasha throw-in, uh, which we are obviously not going to see as the run of play has been mainly going traps on spores way which is not a shock as they sit second on the table Yusuf in the middle Diaz will chip his shot just wide it was blocked by Umit Gunish so that is going to go out for a corner so an in-swinger opportunity coming for Furlong he's going to try to look near post he finds Diak but Kashir makes the save and Kasim Pasha is just unable to break through in the early going although we have had uh, quite a few decent opportunities. Hopefully we, we get some more because if that's it, then it's going to be a very long afternoon here. Barty, originally blocked by Vink, gets it back. Ugrish Khan knocks it away, but Mendy up for Umit Gunish. He'll look to retreat as he has a man on him. All the way back to Shakir. Banaya up for Kevin. Malesh. Oh, feeds it through... Bakasitas finding the inside of the far post for his 10th goal of the year and a 1-0 Trabzonspor lead. As we tick down toward the end of the first half, taking a quick look at the standings, we can actually only fall as far as 12th because the team currently sitting in 13th, they've already played all of their matches, so they don't have any more points that they can gain they currently sit two points behind us obviously we can't lose points uh, we're not Everton oh god that felt like such such a low blow against my own team but a uh, one nil is your score at the half as Tezos Bakashetas with the goal in the 22nd minute some uh, foul trouble already for Kasim Pasha James Furlong German Diaz and Claudio Vink all with yellow cards, Furlog not really having a very good game. So we may err on the side of caution and give ourselves the opportunity to test out another young player in Umut Khan Kurmer. He has come to us. He's 17 years old. He's a breakthrough prospect playing for our U19s. He's got some pace on him, not that great with the ball. We do need to work on that, and he has been working on that but he's got the stamina the balance the work rate all the kind of things we are looking for in a left back he could be an option in the future especially if Ben Wanis and Khan Koshkin are not here we still have Adnan Oktas although he has kind of fallen down the pecking chart quite a bit and if nothing else maybe Umut Khan Komyur I Apologies to any of my Turkish friends on any of my pronunciations. I try my best. Uh, could also be a bargaining chip to help finance whatever moves we look to make in the future. But we are underway here in the second half, making a change at the half in a match that has actually been somewhat even. Possession has obviously gone Travis on Spore's way, 59 to 41%. Uh, but shots on goal, almost even. And we have had opportunities. It's just that Travis on Spore has taken advantage of one more than we have. And can they make it to Mendy ahead for Tani Anderson? Gets that through the five hole of Nicholas. He scores the goal, but the referee has blown the whistle. I suspect he was offside. VAR will review and hopefully confirm that. And yes, they do not. The goal has been awarded. Traps on Spore taking the 2-0 lead. But again, no matter what happens in these matches, I'm fairly certain our job is going to be safe for another year. And we can actually, now that we have been making the strides we've been making in getting this team more on our side, or I should say less not on our side than they were before, I think that we can start to build things in year two as we start to move in players that want to play for us as we bring in players that have a little bit more skill 
more potential or just more value on the open market so we can get a little bit more done and hopefully move further up the table and maybe, just maybe, even qualify for a European place. We're probably not going to have a ton of money to do that. Where we're going to finish in the league, we're only going to get about 115,000 euros as uh, Tezos Bakashetas is able to uh, pot home his second goal of the match. So we're going to make some changes. Uh, Diak has picked up a knock. Jeroen Gomis is going to take his place. Uh, Mustafa is actually not having that bad of a game. It's our defense. So Ugrish Khan is not having a great time. We're going to bring in Issa. Uh, move Dom Joni into the middle. Topak Uzan is also very frustrated. Um, yeah, we, we really don't have a ton of good options. Let's bring in Juan Manuel Cabrera. Uh, in that position, and we'll bring Mamadou Fall in to play our striker. So we'll make a couple of extra changes, which really doesn't give us uh, anything left to do because this will be uh, changes two, three, four, and five. Uh, let's just send them out there without any pressure. Really, anything they can do is going to be a nice bonus. But uh, finding ourselves down 3 0 at home, uh, which I believe is our final home match of the season, that, that ain't great. But you know what? It is what it is. Kickoff highlight. Mamadou Fall with it. Back for Toprock. Yusuf moving it toward the near sideline. Dropping it for Issa. Pushing to the left. Runs into a little bit of trouble both with uh, the defender and the sideline. So Dom Joni over for Gomez. Ahead Diaz. Touch pass up for Cabrera. And Cabrera's got some space moving it into the box. He'll launch it from just inside the 18. And uh, launch it he did all the way into the stands. I mean, we're even on shots 9-9. Nine to nine, So the fact that we are losing 3-0 is highly disappointing. Cabrera missing the header off of the header of Dom Joni. So it was a good delivery near post. Knocked toward the far post by Dom Joni, but unfortunately, Cabrera just just a little too strong uh, with the header. And even though we've taken the lead in shots on goal, we have a massive lead in XG, 2.23. We did not succeed in putting the ball into the back of the net. So it's Trabs on Sport 3, Kasim Pasha nil. One match left. I think we're still sitting in 10th place, so that is the good news. Seventh, uh, I believe, is completely out of the picture. I think we were four points behind them coming into this match. So we've got one match left to see where we finish. Yeah, I shouldn't have tried to be encouraging in our team talk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold the phone. We have player support. We have the support of Nicholas, our goalkeeper. And only two players now do not support us. They are Ben Wanis and Khan Koshkin, two players that will not be here once the summer is done. This is a truly happy day in the life of Nick Bottom as finally things begin to gel for us here in Turkey. And so our final match of the season is actually also our 100th match in charge as a professional coach. Of course, I, I do that because I'm not actually a coach. You know what I mean. Uh, we're going to give Mamadou Fall a chance to shine in his final match with the team before he sails off into the wild blue yonder. He will be our striker. It's going to be Yusuf and Samed Hopash, who is another under-19 player, 17 years old, showing a ton of promise. We're going to give him the opportunity to start in the attacking midfield because when we brought in Fall, it meant we couldn't play Germán Diaz because of the number of foreign players, which we alluded to uh, during the commentary on the last match. Our wingbacks are going to be Furlong and Claudio Vink. Siddiqui is going to be coming back in uh, to play. He's feeling well enough. He passed his fitness test. He's going to be paired with uh, Diak. Damjoni, Ugrish Khan, and Omeru will be our back three with Nicholas in goal one final time this season. Let's end it on a high note, shall we? Let's do it for the fans as we go into our match preview. A 4-3-3 being employed by Bajak Shahir. They're currently sitting in 6th place. We fell down into 11th. Worst we can finish is 12th. We can still, I believe, finish as high as 9th place. 
But that's not going to be easy if Ahmed Tuba is going to put in his first goal of the year in the final match of the season. Less than two minutes in off of a set piece, and we've been pretty good defending set pieces this year. Until now. Is that uh, Claudio Vink? That was Claudio Vink. Uh, he's going to hopefully throw it in and redeem himself, getting back from Diak. Diak once again for Omeru, looking back post-fall. Oh, he hits the crossbar, and Szymanski is able to clear in the middle. Vink cleared away by Reyna. Omeru bringing it forward again. And fall. Oh, man, if he could have scored in his final match to rescue points for us, he would have been my hero. Samed. Uh, in for Ben Saeed, uh, who has picked up a little bit of a knock. He's playing injured. He's staying in this match. He makes a pretty easy save as he looks to survey the field. I mean, we are putting some pressure on, keeping a nice high line. Uh, Zeminski ahead for Abid. Safa now gaining some real estate. Vitinho back for Bastien. Near side, he finds Reyna. That's not Gio Reyna, is it? Into the middle. Philippe Kenny. His 19th goal of the year. It's 2 0 for Jacques Shahir. Uh, any inroads I think we may have made heading into this final episode are just being washed away. We'll blame it on the injuries. We'll blame it on the fact that we have not been able to have a full complement of players. We'll blame it on the fact that our bench is massively depleted as a result. We will blame it on the fact that our team just as it is constituted right now, just does not care as much as we need them to. 19th minute, Bajak here again with control of the ball. Zeminski, Tafer getting it back from Abid, feeding it forward for Denis Churich. Across for Safa, back for Bastien. I mean, look at this ball movement. There's really nothing we can do, uh, except maybe clear it, but only as far as Tafer carrying it deep. Like, yeah, they just don't care. Philippe Kenny with goal number 20. He's got the last two. That's his brace. And it's 3-0. Yes, we are taking the very risky move of berating our team on the road. I mean, we've gotten four shots off on goal. They've gotten eight in the first 30 minutes or so. Uh, can we at least claw one back before the end of this first half? As it's played forward, Furlong into the box, shoots, hits the... He hits the post. Damjani misses wide. Well, it was actually blocked, so we'll have a corner chance. Furlong to send it in. Near post. Cleared away by Reyna and then Kenny. Now we can't even do anything positive on set pieces. So we, we get beat on a corner kick. We can't get our corners to go. It's the second time we've hit the woodwork so far, although it only registered as the one, but we all know that we've hit twice as we hit half time with 11 shots to eight in favor of Bajak Shahir, but it's three nil on the scoreboard. They've had the ball twice as often as we had, and we're going to need to make some changes at the half. Well, we were able to get the team fired up by basically saying that was one of the worst halves we could see uh, in football history. So Iran Gomis is going to come in for Siddiqui still feeling the effects of that injury. Dumjoni's got some nerves, so we'll bring in Adnan Oktas. Uh, we were just talking about him earlier on in the video. Why don't we give him an opportunity to come in? And uh, mm, who else? Uh, Furlong's feeling frustrated, so we'll get him off. Ben Wanis, we'll put you on so you can make your final appearance for the club. I mean, board doesn't want you around anyway, so you might as well. Go out with a bang. Do something good. 13-8, your shots on goal uh, in the first, after the first 10 minutes of the second half. Not really a lot has changed for Kasim Pasha. Reyna with the long throw in into the box. Siminski dropping it down. Truba hits the crossbar. That's going to go out. That should be a throw in for Kasim Pasha. And it will be. But again, more trouble on the pitch. Nothing happening 
on the uh, attacking side. So we're actually going to go a little bit more attacking. Yusuf delivering the corner kick. Oh, and Kenneth Omeryu picking up his third goal of the season to get one back with 25 minutes left in this match past Ben Saeed. See, I knew we could do something positive on the corner. I knew it was just a matter of time. And Omeryu and Diak were both there. Omeryu gets his head on it and puts it past the goalkeeper. But... It's a kickoff highlight, and Bazak Shahir has control. Reyna along the far sideline, into the middle, Bastian ahead for Tafor, looking long for Kenny. Kenny looking for the hat trick, will circle back. He's not going to get a clear shot. Drops it for Reyna, into the middle, Tafor. That one hits the crossbar. Denise Turic, into the middle, Tafor, pushing it back. Massive offensive push being put on by Bazak Shahir right now. Vitinho for Reyna at the corner of the box. Bastien with the screamer. It's going to go off a defenseman, off of the post, and out for a corner. So it ain't over yet, folks. There is a chance for Bazak Shahir to go up 4-1. to one. Turic is going to send it looking for the far post. Nicholas is going to grab it out of the air and say, Enough is enough. And we're going to end up uh, 12th overall in the season. I just know it. Do we have changes left to make? Yeah, Mamadou Fall. I am so sorry, but yeah, that was just not working out. Yusuf is also exhausted. German Diaz will be able to come in now that Fall is off. So our final two changes as we uh, go make an impact, guys. See if you can do something. I really have no massive expectations on you. Uh, Ugrish Khan having an awful game. I can't get him off there are just way too many players on our side who are just basically falling down on the job in these final two matches of the year i really was hoping to end the year on that high note and be able to say hey look after all of that adversity we ended up finishing in the top half that that's just not going to be as mustafa again launched another one wide he was one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper could not keep it on target. Maybe he is not the future. <sighs> We're going to have to look for somebody else to replace Ali Demerel because I'm pretty sure he's gone. Nice feed through, though, to Diaz. Son, what was that? I think I, me personally, physically could have made that shot. Diaz curling it wide. I mean, 37 shots on goal between the two teams through 90 minutes. I mean, we, we've, we've managed 18 shots. It's not like we didn't get our chances. We just could not take advantage of them. And Kasim Pasha falls 3-1 to end the season with a whimper. We're going to finish 12th, but we didn't get relegated. We finished mid-table like we were supposed to. And our team no longer absolutely positively despises us. To me, that is a successful season in Turkey. The board have set our initial budgets for next year, 102000 in the transfer budget, which frankly is what we have in there right now, slightly disappointing, and a wage bill of €97,000 per week, which is about five grand more than we had. So a little bit better, but will it be enough to get us over the top? Hopefully we can bring in a ton of money in player sales over the summer. Wait, is, is this it? This is our season review. That's disappointing. So let's take a look at what our club vision and expectations are for the coming years. The stuff about contracts is the same. They want us to work within our wage budget, which uh, we are on course with that. Finish mid-table in the Super League by the end of next season. Uh, okay, and our contract will expire at that point. And then they just want us to uh, work towards recording a top half finish in the 27-28 season before recording a top half finish in 28-29 and maintaining a finish in the top half for uh, all the years thereafter, which uh, we are hoping that we can do after we have ourselves a spectacular summer. And with that, we have a nice positive team meeting. We send them off for the summer where hopefully lots and lots of changes will be made as we try to finish in the top half for next year. I mean, the mid-table finish is only what the board wants, but if we can finish top half and get ahead of our vision expectations, we can get a new contract. We continue to build what we have started here at Kasim Pasha. Please like, subscribe, do all of those things. Continue to help the channel grow. Thank you very much for being here, and I will see you next time. Until then, bye bar.